Resistors This is one of the most basic component used in almost every electronic circuit you will ever see. So, it's important to understand its working. This video explains what is a resistor, how does it work and how to use resistor in circuits. Let's get started. This tutorial is sponsored by LCSC.com. What is a resistor? It is a passive component which means they cannot generate energy on their own. It exhibits resistance to the current flowing through it. You must have seen this popular graphical representation of how resistance works and relates with current and voltage. Here, resistance is the guy which who tries to control the flow of current by resisting it. This property of resistor is called as resistance and every resistor will have some resistance value and it is measured in ohms. Before getting into its working in detail, let's see the composition of a resistor or how it is made. Consider resistor is a simple wire with two ends, but adding to this, manufacturers will add some materials like carbon, metal or metal oxide film surrounding this wire. These materials will exhibit resistance to the current flowing through it. The amount of resistance offered by a resistor depends on the quantity and type of materials used in it. Let's cut this resistor and see what's inside. This is the material I was talking about. This is the carbon resistor and we have got the material in here. So we had a glance of what resistor can do. Let's understand its working better using a VI characteristics graph. This is a typical VI characteristics curve for resistors of different values. This one is for 10K resistor and this one is for 1K resistor. Always remember, resistor is a linear device since the resistor VI response is always proportional in nature. Now, let's say we are applying one volt across both of these resistors. Now, from the graph, you can observe for 1 volt, 10K resistor allows only less current comparing to 1K resistor. This implies that higher resistance 10K allows less current to flow when 1 volt is applied to it than the lower resistance of 1K. You can use the Ohm's law I equal to V by R to calculate the current flow in these resistors. If you are looking for more detailed explanation on these concepts, check out our website link in the given description, where we have written this tutorial in a much detailed manner. Now, let's move on to the most interesting part of our video. How to use resistor in circuits. The list of uses are quite huge, so I'm going to focus only on 7 most used applications. Current limiting resistors. As the name implies, it limits the flow of current through the circuit. The reason why we do this is because there are few instances where we need to allow only certain amount of current to flow through or the circuit or component might end up being damaged. Current limiting resistors are commonly used for LED, motors, batteries, relay, etc. Let's take a look at the example circuit where current limiting resistor for LED is shown. The circuit is powered by a 9 volt battery. However, the LED we have here has a forward voltage of 2.2 volt and consumes only 20 milliamps to operate. So, we need to limit the current from 9 volt battery to 20 milliamp using the resistor. Using this formula, we can calculate the value of current limiting resistor. The 340 ohm resistor limits the current to 20 milliamp for LED and protects it from getting damage from the current. The above formula applies when you need to limit current to motor, relays, batteries and such. Voltage Dividers Voltage dividers are very much widely used in circuits to divide the input voltage into some fraction and give it as output. This voltage divider is extremely useful in comparators, sensor circuits, trigger circuits and so on to feed reference voltage input. Let's take a look at an example circuit. The input voltage from VCC is about plus 9 volt to the voltage divider. Here 
the output voltage will be 3 volt. What happens here is resistor R1 drops 6 volt and R2 drops 3 volt totals of 9 volt. This is because we knew according to Ohm's law current is proportional to the voltage across a resistor. Greater the resistor greater the voltage drop will be. This output of voltage divider is governed by the formula V out equal to V in into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Applying in the above circuit will give an output of 3 volt. As already stated, voltage divider is widely used in electronic circuits to produce reference voltage, shifting levels of signals and so on. But always remember, voltage dividers should not be used as voltage source to power circuits. If you attempt to do so, the voltage from the divider will drop significantly. Another few things to remember about voltage dividers is that when R1 and R2 is equal, then output voltage will be half of the input voltage. If R1 is very much greater than R2, then output voltage will be close to or almost equal to zero. When R1 is very smaller than R2, resultant output voltage will be close to or almost equal to input voltage. These things will save you some time when analyzing circuits. Feedback elements. Feedback is a concept used in operational amplifiers popularly known as op-amps. In order to understand the need of resistor as feedback element, we need to understand the working of op-amp. I'm not going to explain op-amp in depth here, but going to scratch the surface a bit. Simply put, op-amp is an amplifying device which amplifies the difference between its two input terminals. This op-amp has infinite gain which means it is capable of amplifying the input signal infinitely. Although it's practically not possible but op-amp's gain is so high that when you apply an input signal the output swings to its peak saturation voltages. We don't want that in an amplifier because we need a boosted replica of our input signal and that's why we use an amplifier. If we need to get an amplified signal from op-amp, we need to control its gain. For that purpose, in an op-amp circuit, a portion of output is fed back to the inverting input of op-amp using a resistor, making it a negative feedback system. Negative feedback reduces the gain of op-amp and keeps the amplification under control. For a positive feedback system, portion of output is fed back to the non-inverting input of op-amp. This type of feedback is used to increase the gain. Positive feedback is not widely used as much as negative feedback configuration. Filter circuits. Filters are used widely in many electronic circuits, where it will allow signal of certain frequency and attenuates the undesired frequencies. Resistor forms an integral part of passive filters along with capacitors and inductors. There are three important types of filters which can be constructed using resistors. They are low pass filter, high pass filter and band pass filter. Low pass filter can be constructed using resistor and capacitor in this manner. It allows only the low frequency signal which is the signals with frequency less than cutoff frequency to pass through and blocks the high frequency components in the incoming signal. Say, for example, we have a cutoff frequency of 3 kHz. This filter only allows signal frequency less than 3 kHz and blocks the frequency more than 3 kHz. On the other hand, high pass filter can be constructed using resistor and capacitor in this way. It allows only the high frequency signal, which is the signals with frequency higher than cutoff frequency, to pass through and blocks the low frequency components in the incoming signal. Say for example, we have cutoff frequency of 3 kHz. This filter only allows signal frequency more than 3 kHz and blocks the frequency less than 3 kHz. Bandpass filters is a combination of both high pass and low pass filters. Unlike these, bandpass filters have two cutoff frequencies. Hence, this filter allows only signal within a particular band of frequencies. Say for example, Lower cutoff frequency is 3 kHz, 
and higher cutoff frequency is 10 kHz, this filter only allows signal frequency from 3 kHz to 10 kHz and frequency outside this band will be blocked. We have reached halfway of this tutorial. If you find this video informative so far, kindly subscribe to our channel for more tutorials. This video is sponsored by LCSC, one of the largest online vendor for electronic components. Their wide range of components, 4 hours shipping ready and low price makes them the best in business and our go-to choice for components. For more information, visit www.lcse.com. Welcome back to the tutorial. Now let's see what is timing circuits. RC circuits, also popularly known as timing circuits, where resistor and capacitor works together to generate a time delay. This timing circuit is pretty simple to build. All it takes is to connect resistor and capacitor in series. You might have been aware that capacitor stores charge and normally takes some time to charge to the level of applied voltage. Here, using a resistor limits the current flow and thereby reducing the rate at which the capacitor charges and thus generating a time delay. This time delay is given by the equation 5T equal to 5RC. So consider a circuit where a 9 volt is applied to a RC circuit where resistor value is 10K and capacitor value is 100 microfarad. This will give a time delay of about 5 seconds delay for capacitor to charge fully. The reason it takes 5T or 5RC time period is because of the charging curve of capacitor. This concept is out of scope of this video. However, I have explained this in detail in the article link given in the description below. Pull up and pull down resistors. These are resistors that you will find in most of the digital circuits, which operate in means of logic levels. Let's consider TTL logic to explain this better. In 5 volt TTL logic devices, in order to achieve logic zero input, voltage must be within 0 to 0 0.8 volt, whereas for logic one, input voltage must be within 2 to 5 volt. So what happens here is, digital input pins are very prone to EM interference from external surroundings. This EM interference induce voltage on these input pins, which will lead the IC to read incorrect logic level when the pin is connected to a switch. This is called as floating state. To avoid this, resistors are used to fix the logic level inputs to either high or low. Pull-up resistors or resistors used to pull the input pins to logic 1 state. This connects from input pin to VCC which ensures the input pin reads high state. Whereas pull down resistors are resistors used to pull the input pins to logic 0 state. This connects from input pin to ground which ensures the input pin reads low state. I have made a video explaining the working of pull up and pull down resistors in detail. Kindly look into it for better understanding. Load resistor. In electronics, load is referred to a device or component which draws current from a circuit. It can range from simple LEDs to buzzer to relays to speaker and etc. So load resistor is a resistor that is connected at the output stage of a circuit to draw current from the circuit. The term load resistor is often comes into practice in mathematical modeling of a circuit. For the purpose of analysis, a resistor of particular value is chosen as a load resistor to simulate the current draw equivalent to the device that is intended to use in the output. There are cases where load resistors will be a part of practical circuit. Certain voltage regulators need a load resistor at the output. This draws minimal current to keep the functioning of regulator stable and in transistor amplifiers, load resistor will be commonly used to prevent excess current runoff between collector and emitter and this in turn prevents the transistor from being damaged. There are similar examples where load resistors will be part of the circuit to keep the function of circuit stable. That's it, we have covered all the important applications of a resistor in circuits. 
Now we have one last important thing left to learn about resistor. Wattage rating. This is one of the most important criteria of a resistor that most of us pay least attention. Resistors resist current flow for a given voltage. When this happens, resistors heats up due to dissipated power. Wattage rating is nothing but the amount of power a resistor can safely dissipate. When the power dissipated exceeds the wattage rating of a resistor, it is likely to be destroyed or smoked. Power dissipated in a resistor can be calculated using the formulas P equal to I square R or P equal to V square divided by R. Consider you are driving a LED of 2.2 volt with 12 voltage with a 330 ohm series resistor. In this case, the power dissipation in the resistor will be around 0.29 watts. In this case, you have to use a 0.5 watt resistor to safely operate in the circuit. Hope this video was informative to you. This is the first part of this electronic component tutorial series and we will publish tutorials on other components very soon. You can find the other tutorials in the space once it is out. Check out the links in the description for detailed explanation on this tutorial and additional resources. If this video was useful to you, do like this video. Comment your queries, feedback and suggestions in the comment box below. Do subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications for future tutorial videos in this series. Thanks for watching. I am Frank Donald from Gadgetronics. See you next time.